Pasteur pipettes are named after Louis Pasteur, the famous French chemist. Two parts. One is glass, one is a rubber bulb. The rubber bulb may be used hundreds of times. The glass parts are typically used only once. Pasteur pipettes are located near the sink in the back room. There they are, next to the microwave. When using a Pasteur pipette, first you must attach the bulb to the glass. It should slide on with a little difficulty. Don't need to push it on very far. Next, the tip of the pipette can be immersed in the liquid. And you can see the liquid gets drawn up. Beginners tend to grab only the bulb and as you can see the pipette is very wobbly if you do that. So you want to get a couple of fingers on the glass and that will hold your pipette more securely. Very steady. Beginners also tend to tilt their pipette thinking the liquid will drip out but you can see nothing drips out. Atmospheric pressure is plenty strong enough to keep the liquid in the pipette. So keep your pipette more vertical. I can add my liquid drop by drop if I wish or faster if I wish. I can go back. Notice I'm getting two fingers on the glass. I can go back and pick up more. Nice steady, well controlled transfer of liquids. When you're finished with a Pasteur pipette, you have a box for disposing of the glass part. The rubber part is reusable. Pipetting organic solvents can be tricky. Water is very cohesive and tends to stay in the pipette, but organic solvents are less cohesive. The most difficult solvent to pipette is probably methylene chloride. It has no hydrogen bonding to make it cohesive. Its boiling point is near 40 degrees, which is about the same as human body temperature. So, when you're pipetting dichloromethane, uh, notice I've got two fingers on the pipette this time. A little different style than last time. Um, often, if you do this, you can see it, it just drips out. And it's because my body heat is warming the vapors in the pipette and producing pressure that forces the liquid out. So, if I'm pipetting dichloromethane, it's a good idea to pipette up and down a couple of times. And I have a much better chance now of having it not drip. Still, I don't want to wait too long, so I should have my vessel prepared for receiving the dichloromethane. But this is a good trick to keep the dichloromethane in your pipette.